This is the uh, November 25th, 2019 meeting of the Montpelier Planning Commission. Uh, called to order. Uh, and the first thing we have to do is approve the agenda. So if everyone takes a look. Uh, Changes to the agenda. Okay. See. Agenda's approved. Deemed approved. Deemed approved. Uh, next on the agenda is the comments from the chair. Um, the only thing I really have to say is just a reminder of kind of where we're at and like planning over the next planning on planning the next couple months. Uh, we're going to be working on this, the different chapters of the city plan, and tonight we'll find out about how long it takes us to get through one. We have two to look at, and that's really all we plan to do. Uh, last time, the group more or less decided to wait on doing a vision statement until we'd done a few chapters and until we, you know, kind of get our feet under us on this and then start thinking about a vision statement and the process for that. Uh, also in January, we'll be um, revisiting the design review stuff we've been working on because that both the uh, formal hearing will take place then. Mike, do you know exactly when at this point? Don't have an exact date yet. Okay. So that'll be coming up too. So that's our next couple months right there. Uh, and that's all I have to say. So moving on from there, we have general business and comments from the public, but no members of the public are present, which then brings us to approval of the minutes from November 12. So everyone can take a look at those. I have a quick question about the discussion on the first thing on the second page. The last sentence, a change regarding cheaply built structures on the river hazard area will be proposed? Like sheds and whatnot? Or is it something else? Am I misremembering it? Um, yeah, it's, I think the words I used were low value structures with low value context. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure that's what it, I want to make sure we we're talking about like yeah. Shabby. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not shabbily built. Yeah, I think yeah. like, I mean, if we can change that. Mm. All right. It does seem kind of better. Um, low, va low value low instead value. of cheaply yeah. built. structures. <laughs> yes, that's... <laughs> no, we're not judging. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I was like, I don't remember talking about it. Was, yeah, was it there? has to do with, um, I mean, what we have in this specific case is somebody who is um, does snow plowing, and so he just wants to right. put a structure over top of his sand pile so the sand pile doesn't right. freeze into a rock. Yeah. And we're just like, if the river moves and eventually takes out that structure, right. he's out a couple hundred bucks, and so we don't see that as a big threat. It's not in the flood hazard area. It's only in the river corridor, so it's, you know, but it's outside of the river setback. Um, but if the river in this location were to move 60 feet, it would take out his low value structure with low value contents. So it's below the flood plane. It's above the flood plane, actually. Really? Yep. Oh, so it's, it's out in of the, the river flood corridor. Way yeah, it's in the river corridor where we have the meander belt. Yeah. And that's what could potentially be impacted. And currently, the rules don't allow any structures, any new structures in the river corridor. Which is the floodway. Nope. No. That's another classification. It's another okay. classification. So oh, the floodway geez. is looking at where the water comes up and where it goes to yes. in, in a 100-year event. Your floodway is looking at... Um, well, the meander. Well, no, the floodway is where the, the, the majority of the water would tend to move. Yeah. Um, it's more complicated than that. But so usually, if you're starting with the river, you'd have the floodway, then you'd have the floodplain fringe, yeah. floodway fringe. Then there's also a concept which the state has implemented, which is the river corridor. Now, this is looking at the river itself moving left to right. So you may have a large berm, and what happens is um, the river moves and undermines it, and then the bank sloughs in. And so something that's out of the floodplain can end up in the river. In the river. And so they've tried to map out these river corridors. We adopted a river corridor, but only from the Cumming Street Bridge to the Wrightville Dam, so just on that stretch there. So, um, 
So yeah, in not all cases, in in some cases, you can be in one and not the other. Usually, the floodplain is inside the river corridor. <coughs> the river corridor is wider, but not always. So, in this case, we happened to get an application for what seemed like a reasonable project, and the rules would prohibit it. So we figured we would amend the rules. Um, to allow this case and other cases like it in the future. So I think we have a motion. Um, so we're, we're looking for a motion, maybe. Uh, and to Mike, approve the minutes as amended. Um, oh. Yeah, unless you, yeah, and you you understand. Oh, the change. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. I just had one more question. Is it important? Because I noticed they said Ariane's vote couldn't be seen in the video. I noticed that too. And yeah. I don't care. I mean, I think they all passed three to one. Which? And there was one the, uh, on the first page, the second from yeah. the bottom. Aaron made a motion that 10 4 be included. Move Redstone to 7 5 and portion of three properties on the west side. So. I voted against, I think, some of those and maybe voted for one. I don't know if that's important. I, I'm fine with it, guys, because I assume they passed in all cases anyway. If we need, so yes. do we need to change that or not? I don't know. And I don't remember which <laughs> districts are which, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't think. <laughs> if we don't need it, I just. Could it be seen I'm trying to video. remember if we did separate motions on the thing. We did. Change it. Will be I think we, did, we did, did on either yeah. side of the map, right? Like this yeah. side. And then the we did we did separate side. we did separate votes for right. each individual Sorry. change. Yeah. I don't remember. I, yeah, I know there were yeah. a couple maybe that you voted against. I don't think I don't think it hurts anything to be stated like this because okay, that's good. Because that's yeah, we good. think that you yeah. voted against that and it still passed, like okay. you said. Yeah. Your vote only matters if it's on camera. <laughs> What? Your vote only matters if it's on the camera. I guess so. <laughs> we can see. Well, I move approval. Yeah. Worst case scenario, someone proves that you voted against it. <laughs> okay. Watch the video. <laughs> you can't see me. I move approval of the minutes from November 12th. Do you have a second? A second. Okay. As amended. Is that correct? Oh, yes, as amended. All those in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. <coughs> minutes approved as amended. Now we can get to business, which is first taking a look at the historic and cultural resources chapter of the city plan, which my, uh, Mike is going to walk us through. Take it away. Okay. So, um, just a, a little bit of a, a big picture. You have two here. You've got historic and housing. Um, we've talked in the past about the implementation. That was that chapter which had the butterflies, rainbows, and unicorns. So, um, so we've got one done and two of them that we're looking at right now. Um, I'm currently, or this month, I've met on economic development, energy, um, natural resources, I met with the Conservation Commission, uh, transportation, and I've been working on utilities and facilities. So we have a number of them that are out being worked on. Um, but these two are ones that have been, I met with, in this case, historic, I met with the Historic Preservation Commission. Gave them a bunch of ideas. They worked on it. They came back. We made some revisions, and um, they made some final changes. So uh, they looked at it a couple times. They approved it and sent it on to you guys um, to start to review. I mean, the idea over time is that you'll get to review each of the chapters. You can start being able to compare them, how they relate to each other. Are there things missing? Are there things that are talked about in two chapters? Um, you know, do they complement or contradict each other? So that's kind of your role at this point is to, to go through and start reading and reviewing them. 
Um, obviously, the example I always like to use is the public transportation. We can talk about it in energy. We can talk about it as a community service. Is public transportation a community service, or is that talked about in the transportation chapter? There are different places we can talk about it, but we have to talk about it somewhere. Um, so this was the first one. Again, we're focusing on the implementation strategy. So they, um, I gave them a bunch of ideas to think about um, for aspirations. Um, again, I presented to them the butterflies, rainbows, and unicorns theory of how we were laying things out. And then they went through and kind of put together. Um, this one is probably the most simple and straightforward. So it's a good one to kind of start with to get used to the, to the process, because there's only one aspiration, three goals, and then a set of strategies for implementing those goals. So it's, it's a fairly straightforward addition. Um, and I mean, a couple of cases, as, as I read through it today, getting ready for the meeting tonight, there are a couple of little edits or things that I would do. I've got a question for them that I'm not sure where they came up with that idea. Um, but. That's a little bit of an introduction. Um, so I don't know. Mike, should, yeah. should each one of these be identified as a program, project, or policy? This The first goal doesn't seem to sort of identify those. The goal, the goal would not. So the goal. No, 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 I mean the strategies. Yeah, the strategies the within the goal. Uh, in some cases, it's um, like one of them is uh, plans or studies. So a mm -hmm. lot of this first one, because the goal is to improve the city's understanding of its historic and cultural resources, um, a lot of these are ones that, you know, um, we should conduct surveys. I mean, I don't think we have to necessarily say this okay. is a plan, but, but that's who? basically what it is. In this case, it would be um, the Historic Preservation Commission. I mean, that might be helpful to know that that's who it is, that we're not going to dump this on your office. Uh, yeah, so one more thing for you to do. Yep. Um, well, uh, so the idea is, and we talked about this a little bit, is that the, a number of these where the, the dark italics, the bold italics, are really meant that we would eventually have that be able to be a hyperlink to where we would have a more detailed explanation of who would be doing this and what it would take, but otherwise the implementation strategy is going to get really big if we start talking about who's going to be responsible for doing what. Um, well, where it says conduct survey of archaeologically sensitive areas. Um, That's one that the what would probably happen in that case is the Historic Preservation Commission would apply for a CLG grant to hire a consultant to do that project. Yeah, I mean, it, it. I don't know. It just. I think it would be helpful if we had an idea of, of whose ballpark is that going to fall into. Um, and I thought that was in fact one of our goals to be able to identify who's going to be taking on these various strategies. Yeah, and there and there will be. Um, the issue is a little bit of chicken and egg of how much do we build out the other pieces until we've kind of laid out what's going to be supported, where we're going to go. I think yes. The answer is yes, it will be. It is discussed above in, above, above the goals and strategies. There's a little bit of a description of, you know, the Historic Preservation Commission and, um, you know, the, the planning and implementation of this Historic and Cultural Resource Plan will be accomplished under the guidance of Historical Preservation Commission with staff support by the city manager funded by the city council. So they, they have their, they're going to be the primary people who are going to be implementing most of these when it says, you know, do a culturally sensitive areas and map resources. So, it's going okay. to fall there, so they're actually going to be doing this, not city staff? Uh, I mean, with the assistance of city staff, they don't, there's only so much they can do as a volunteer right. staff. So we have currently, they're assigned four hours of assistance. That's um, Meredith. Every month, oh, Meredith month. Okay. goes to their goes to their meetings and helps them out. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are a number of other people that factor into this. Um, if there was a grant application for somebody who needed to do a facade renovation and was going through the de designated downtown program, Kevin could fill out those grant applications and assist 
folks with that. So it's not just Meredith, but mm -hmm. um, they would be the ones tasked primarily with working on this. Um, and, and they certainly, when I was working with them, they were very, um, they found this very helpful because um, it really, they, they didn't know what they were going to be doing for the next couple of years. So for them, this actually turned out to be a good mental exercise for them for what they wanted to set up and what they wanted to try to do over the next couple of years now that they had finished updating the historic register and doing the design review rules. They were kind of like, all right, what's our next, what's our next thing we want to be working on? So um, it's a little bit of a long wish list. Um, I have a hard time um, with this sort of format of, uh, of breaking it up by of the way it's been broken up and then to have like the goal and then the strategies under that and then another goal that's like vaguely similar and then the strategies under that and having a lot of the strategies be exactly the same. Which, you know, again, not a substantive comment, and I could, I could take this and just rearrange it, but I don't know what other people think. My brain is just struggling to. Let's, let's take the all of What's this the in. problem? Oh, it's just like too much? Yeah, it's just we're going to end up with this massive document of a lot of redundant things. Oh, that I it's gonna I mean, sit on we're the shelf. Well, I mean, I think this is okay as a starting point, just because yeah. it helps us. I mean, Actually, like the redundancy can kind of help us feel like, well, they want to do these things. That's so important. I mean, we'll consolidate all this stuff. I think we'll streamline it. But yeah, I think this is a, you know, this is a working document. It's not a yeah. <laughs> but I, I take your point. It's it's a lot. And are they actually? They're proposing all of these strategies. The commission is. Yeah, I mean, we put a number of, I, I made a number of suggestions for them to look at. I think a couple of them could be could be edited. I mean, there's a lot of things that we already do. I think some of them are ones that we just have to look at of what's new. Um, I think it would be helpful for me. So I'm also kind of struggling with how to process it um, because I'm visual and this is hard to see. So... It would be helpful, I think, to see it um, maybe as a table, something that is a little bit easier to digest. And then I, but it's really, it's ultimately something I think we need to go through and figure out what those overlaps are. And I think it's important to distinct to have a distinction between things that we're already doing and things that we're try that are my good ideas we might want to do in the future. And those are really, I think, the good ideas for the future are really the the meat of it, so then mm -hmm. we can say, let's, let's keep doing these things and have that as a separate list, but I think pulling those out is going to be helpful. And then if there are things that require funding or more staff time or more than we currently have, I think that needs to be identified as well. So how's yeah, that, and how's I was going to say, can we estimate, <laughs> I, I, I don't know if that's part of the city plan, to estimate how much money it would cost to, yeah, because I noticed the additional resources as well. <laughs> Sorry, Gertie. No, that's no, fine. Uh, so I was just going to ask everyone like how they feel about going ahead and, and diving in and get, doing some of that now. Um, we can walk through and we can try to flag things that are redundant and, and improvements. Yeah, the redundants I can find pretty easy because I know they're they're in there, um, and we can, as I said, we can work on how this gets um, restructured and how it eventually gets presented. I mean, because one of the presentation pieces is we're trying to get this to be more of a web-based. Um, you know, if this were structured with carrots and drop-downs, then you would have the aspiration and you'd have the three goals. And if you hit on the carrot, it might drop you to what the stra strategy is under that goal. Um, and then it becomes a little bit clearer. And I guess maybe that's the place to start, is to start at the top of the aspiration um, and whether you think that um, makes sense. Um, I would, in this case, I would strike the continue to and just say Montpelier will be a community that understands, appreciates, and preserves its historic and cultural resources. So that's their long-term aspiration that they want to work towards. 
because people could argue, you know, to what extent we're continuing. Yes. And that's generally not language you want to have in aspiration. In an aspiration. Yeah, shouldn't it be is a community? Um, yeah. uh, I, I just, it was just in the aspiration. I think I like we use more. To take out, yeah. yeah, we used will be a in a number of them, yeah. kind of looking at a, a future state that we were looking to achieve. Montpelier will be a community that understands. And then the key is that there, there are certain that understands, appreciates, and preserves it, are the three, three important things. Yeah. And then the goal A is to improve the city's understanding of historic and cultural resources. Again, are we looking to maintain it? Are we looking to evolve? Are we looking to transform? Um, in this case, we're kind of doing a more evolve. We're looking to improve our understanding. We're looking to increase the city's appreciation of, for its historic and cultural resources and to continue and improve the city's protection of historic and cultural resources. So those were the three goals. They broke it into three different goals and then came up with strategies. How would we increase our understanding of our resources? Well, we would conduct sur um, the historic surveys. We would do more of those. Um, I had a question on the, the next one to identify and develop historic context and themes. I'm not sure exactly what they were talking about there. That's one they must have added in. Mm, um, that does need clarity. Yeah. So it's not and then good. so so on and so these were all meant to achieve that understanding line of so how we would continue means that it's already happening. Continue would mean that it's already happening. Things we're already doing. Um, uh, then there would be. Uh, an, an amend or, or a new. So sometimes we have a program that we need to adjust. Um, like, you know, then there's to continue to participate in the CLG program. That's something that we already do. Um, Is it me or this seems like kind of like an underwhelming aspiration that will like continue to understand that it's our certain cultural resources? Like, we have like the biggest continue continuous like historic district in the state. We're like the state capital. We have these incredible historic cultural resources. Like, shouldn't they be like celebrated and recognized like nationally? Like, I don't know. That seems more like more of a goal or aspiration rather than continuing to understand our resources. Yeah, my my recommendation was to strike continue to out of that aspiration. I, th I thought that would make it stronger, but it still doesn't celebrate as you as you would have for a much stronger appreciation. Well, appreciate yeah. appreciate <laughs> Basically, first we have to get a community that understands. Yeah. It. yeah, that they are special. Yeah, uh, but I think I feel like that's more of a strategy, right? Mm -hmm. Like our goal isn't. I mean, maybe it's that's, to have it? like an enlightened population, but is that really what we're like? Are, if in twenty years from now we, we're at a point where like oh. A lot of the community really understands our start. Which I guess that's pretty cool. Like maybe or, in our schools we have like you know programs like that. Yeah. But we're only I looking eight years down the road. So at the end of eight <laughs> years, we should <laughs> definitely have a community that does this. Um, hopefully. I, I like a bolder statement. If you if you have some language to pitch. Um. Could we say something about its cultural and historic, its historic and cultural resources? So, like its descriptive noun, historic and cultural resources. So, like, na like, um, to acknowledge the significance of them in the state or nationally, as you're trying to, as you were saying. Are you saying of its significant <clears throat> historic? Yeah, significant of the significant, there, but so. that's, no, yeah, that's maybe not good enough, but kind of like if we're trying to um, articulate that Montpelier is particularly special in some way, that would be one way we could put it in this sentence. Can we, yeah, can, can we talk about like our, our history of building, like what are, Resources is just so generic, and it's, what does that mean? You know, well, like let's bring this to life a little bit, so that like a normal person on the street, like you explain this to them, you know what you're talking about. You're not like, I want you to understand our cultural resources. Yeah. Thanks. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. 
Um, and another another thing I can put out there, I mean, these are our first ones that we're working on. I had to kind of make a decision as to how to phrase things, and we would be consistent throughout. In this case, I was kind of, I may get this wrong, using a second person instead of, so we're talking about appreciating and preserving its historic and cultural resources. It could also go and say um, Montpelier will be a community that understands, appreciates our historic and cultural resources. I mean, at least that makes more of a, it's just Some ownership. how we, yeah. how yeah, we it phrase it will be consistent throughout. I just, as I said, I did it this way. If you I, want I our. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Um, we've also heard yes. we've also heard celebrate as a as a thing to add, and uh, we've also heard reference to the state and national role of Montpelier. Yeah, like state and nationally significant historic and cultural resources. Like that would just name them as something that is undisputably important, and <coughs> that's what we're trying to recognize and understand and appreciate and preserve. Right, and if we could be like. <coughs> Recognized as a community that is a lot, like does an excellent job at doing that. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's something where we can be like, "Hey, we were recognized. <clears throat> like that happened." You can say yes or no. I don't know when we'll get to a point where we can check a box to say that the community understands our cultural resources. Like, did we accomplish that? That's going to be tough to. We should include an assessment goal. Everyone has to be tested. <laughs> <laughs> I think a little bit of the understand was to get to, to, to answer some of the question of why we do some things. Why do we, can, why do we study and continue to, um, you know, why would we do an archaeologically sensitive study? Well, it's really, the community may not, the community broadly may not understand, but the community, um, at least in the Historic Preservation Commission, that, that smaller group of people who are very interested in this would increase an understanding of our resources that we have. Can I make a suggestion here? Which is, I, I take your point, and I think it's a very good one. Um, but I might suggest is, I think once we get a better handle on some of the other chapters, and we're able to look at this piece in conjunction with a larger set of chapters that we're looking at, we will have a better sense of how, and, and then we develop a visioning statement. That will help guide how we frame sort of the nuts and bolts issues that are outlined in the chapter here. I mean, it sounds like what you're talking about, like what we're already getting the weeds on is how we want to frame these things. And so how the language we want to use to couch the nuts and bolts issues that are outlined here. And I feel like we might be getting ahead of ourselves if we do that. Um, because, I mean, this isn't the city plan. This is one small component of it. And I think once we look at some more, we'll have a better sense of like, do we want to use celebrating Montpelier as sort of a unifying theme in our visioning statement? And then we can apply that theme to these chapters and we can tweak the language to sort of fit that. Um, but looking at other sections, it might just seem like maybe that's not the right word we want to use. I, I, I'm just saying, like, I feel like we might be kind of getting ahead of ourselves with how, like, specific. We're kind of we're kind of getting the weeds too quick on this. Where yeah, I think I word, think we want wordsmithing things is probably the thing. right. Exactly, I think we might want to just look at this for what this really is. It's an outline of sort of the the strategies that they proposed to the commission to try to achieve certain goals. And may, I, my suggestion is, is we take the goals as they are on their face value right now. Don't question them and sort of look at whether or not the strategies that are outlined here, how we want to, A, what's being done, B, what that we can do, and whether or not we can prioritize those things in the city plan, and then take a look. And then once we have that figured out, then we can sort of take a look at the goals. Like, I think there's certain value in the understanding goal. Um, it's not sexy by any means um, but I do think that there's value and I think if we sort of think about it just as like do these strategies make sense to support that goal and if those strategies make sense I think the value of the goal sort of becomes a little more apparent um, as opposed to just saying like I don't understanding which I agree is not a particularly engaging term um, that's just my two cents. 
I, I feel like, and I maybe I'm thinking about where I'm sure we're all thinking about the process in a little bit different way, but like, to me, I'm looking at this and I want to get it to a place where the language is a little more concrete or people could look at this and understand what's really being said so that we can have a robust or as robust as possible, <laughs> whoever wants to get into this, you know, chapter. Uh, participation and feedback because I, I just think yeah some of the language is kind of like well what are we really talking about and <laughs> I, I don't know that's anyway just my two cents <laughs> there will be um, a chapter a discussion chapter that will be before this um, we've kind of done things backwards talking about the implementation strategy first and then working back to the chapter so there will be a more I guess I would say a flowery or better, you know, we want a thousand words that really explains why historic and cultural resources are important. And, you know, maybe that's where we get more of a description, but, you know, it is important that, you know, I, I don't disagree with John that it is kind of a, a, a yeah, bit I, of a dry, right now, but I think a but dry I, aspiration, but I'm, I'm hoping sure. that there's a, a written part that's really meant to inspire. We're not getting bogged down in, in graphics and all these other things or, or you know, of, of yeah, it seems, but there's, data there's, points. There's a, but there's a place for us to synthesize and like really pack a punch. Retort. Really go and get, send out the message of yeah. why why this is special, why this is important, why we talk about this, and ex give people a reason. You know, this is why we you know spend money and spend time doing this. Um, this is why we have an HPC. This is why they're uh, a certified local government, and um, you know why we have design review rules. Well, I think that there was some substance to the wordsmithing. <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think we were doing both there. Um, and I think this is the, the time for it. Um, and, and the appreciates, uh, just before I lose my train on, on the appreciates piece, this really comes back to the reason why Cliff Street got removed <coughs> from design review. Um, and the sense right. was just that they, they don't understand the value of protecting the historic resources, and that was why, from the Historic Preservation Commission, they felt it was important to to have as one of our things that that the community understands and appreciates why historic preservation is important. Um, and so, for them, even though they're they're a little bit more dry, um, there are consequences, I guess, to having a community that doesn't. And there's a sense that we have great resources, and our community doesn't fully understand and appreciate them. Well, but possibly, I mean, some financial considerations for the homeowners, I'm assuming, was also a factor. Maybe they do appreciate cultural resources, but they also appreciate their budget and they value yes. one over the other. So I just, I mean. And actually, they, I, I, yeah, they I, identified it that they didn't understand why they were in the historic district. Yeah. That was what they said. So. But they, is that why they wanted to get yes. out? Yes, they, they thought understand. that they didn't. They, they, didn't, they didn't think their resources were the best to appreciate. Like, oh. Right, but I they mean, didn't see the value of appreciating them, really. Well, well I, I mean, I don't want to yeah. I, I don't yeah. second guess what they do or don't appreciate or understand. Yeah. What I do think is that they did highlight some process issues that the city had in treating people inconsistently. Yes, that was and, a factor as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Lack of clarity in the regulations. Um, and did not want to be, you know, subject to that, which I don't think is reflected in this at all. Just to suggest that they don't understand or appreciate is sort of putting the blame on them and saying they're not enlightened enough to, to live there and, you know, be subject to that. When really, when we look at, you know, our, our, our city and our, our government or what we've set up in regulations, I think we have to take some ownership and responsibility in, in creating a system that uh, can do this and at the same time have people not feel like they are being tricked or are not getting like a fair um, shake or understanding of what they can and can't do. Well, uh, I, I guess under the goal A where it says improve the city's understanding, I can certainly understand appreciate that all of these strategies might improve the understanding of 
the HPC, but I'm not sure how that translates into the public. How does this so it's create a public that understands? The three goal areas are really different buckets of that. The first one is really the surveying data collection information okay. side. The second one is really what they're, what they're calling appreciation. That's really the education for the community piece. So I actually, I think the three buckets they broke it down into make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So it's the, we need more information about these things, but what do we need to get? What sort of education do we have for the community? What other opportunities might be there? And then the third one is really that, then how do we protect our resources? So I think those three buckets make a lot of sense in terms of their goal areas. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm just thinking that, that even within each one of those buckets, there's a public um, value, there's value to it. I mean, the public participate in that. The, the public should understand uh, their resources as well as the planning, the, his, the historic commission does. In, the, in these strategies, I'm not seeing where this information that's being gathered is being spread to the public. Uh, it was meant to kind of come out more in the in the section B under the community appreciating. So develop a speaker series, uh, hosting walking tours, developing self-guided walking tours, um, improve the historic and cultural resources topic on the city's website, identify education materials for the public. I think um, they're identify and develop historic context for themes significant to Montpelier's historic development. I think if I understand what they meant by that, that should go in B. But it was the that's, one you were going to... That's the one that I totally didn't understand. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if I, if I I'm, have a thought about what that means, then I think it should go in B. Probably a B. I'll, I'll ask them and see. What, I think they mean, they like, think for example, <laughs> if a <the> theme... <laughs> I'm if always... read, for example, <laughs> if a theme <laughs> significant to Montpelier is that, like, when you think of Montpelier, what do you think of? I'm just I'm trying to think of something, but, like, it's... House. Well, it's like... Um, yeah, like it's a state capital, so we should be identifying and developing historic contexts or like stories or communications about Montpelier's history as a capital. Or if we think of it as a walkable city or with the bike path and stuff, then we should be talking about what was the historical context of walkability in Montpelier. I think that's what they're talking about. So like things that we already just think are important about Montpelier. What was the hist history of all that? How did that come to be? Mm -hmm. I think is what they're trying. So it's like creating narratives, historical narratives around things we already value. What's the history of the college up on the hill? That's really or the fact that we have a historic downtown at all. You know, yeah. <coughs> or like the, the, uh, there's the little thing on Taylor Lang Langdon Street with the floods. Maybe yes, like historic right. Around. Yeah, it's a flood. I was going to say, isn't that historical context in downtown, like, fires and floods? Yeah. Fires and floods. <laughs> 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 then there was another fire. And then yeah, another exactly. Floods. That's exactly <laughs> Yes. I mean, Barry, Why are all the houses built after 1880? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we have a fire for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or a flood. Yeah. Or a flood. Right, so I can see how that's not really the, the gathering. That's not an information yeah. gathering yeah. thing. That's a sort of communication like sort of tool. Yeah, I'll, sure. I'll check in. I think so. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure we need to to line them up perfectly with the goals. If you think of it as having, you know, our goals listed right away and then all the strategies and then you can have like a links to goal A, goal goal B, maybe oh, slightly yeah. less or so. Rather yeah, it's than a different way of yeah. different way of doing it. Yeah, you could do like parenthetically, you know, goal A, B, you know, whatever one they attach to. Right, and maybe it'll end up in another section as well. Like, oh, you know, down, yeah, down the expectation is that, like, especially unified development regulations, that's your zoning regulations. I mean, that's going to plunk into chapter after chapter after chapter. It's just going to keep dropping in. Um, um, but, yeah, that would be that could be another way. I think this was, as, as I said, this was how they were. Um, what, how I worked with them was to go through and say, okay, you know, if this is important, if community appreciation is important, what would you do? And then we would go back to go through and say, well, this is this is something you did, you know, being a CLG means we can do grants for outreach. Well, we already talked about that CLG also gives you money to do grants for understanding. Well, we'll just say, that, say it again. But obviously the same program works for both goals. Um, so it was just our way of working through 
but again, it works well for working through developing it, but for presenting it, it may just make sense to have the aspiration, have the three goals, and then have a list of strategies with links. So Mike, are we, is part of our charge to sort of evaluate the viability of some of these proposed, to use your parlance, I guess, like, is it our job to determine whether or not unicorns, butterflies, and rainbows are worth putting in the town plan? <laughs> there certainly could be um, places where, and I mean, there's one, for example, that um, on the last page, you know, the amending the tax stabilization program. I don't know if it's if it makes makes a lot of sense for them to work that way, um, because the last sentence isn't actually possible. So we actually have to strike focus on single and two family and owner occupied because they're actually not eligible under state law to be in the tax stabilization program. So there's an easy one. I mean, there's no real policy decision for us to make. It's not really possible, so we can strike that. And then the question is, is this really? Um, you know, most of our tax stabilizations are going to be in the downtown, uh, or, or it, most of our historic structures are in the downtown, which is in the TIF district. And sure, can I can I take a more, kind yeah. of a more straightforward example? Um, like, let's say I'm on page one. So, conduct a survey of archaeologically sensitive areas and map resources. Yep. Okay. Like, that's going to require a certain amount of resources, right? Your office can identify particular grants that maybe they could apply for to do that sort of work. Um, but I mean, understanding full well that money from here takes money from there in most instances. Mm -hmm. You know, at some point, you know, typically the city plans just sort of say, these are sort of goals that we strive for. These are implementation strategies we will try to implement to, to further these goals without consideration of whether, like, what the practical viability of those implementation strategies being executed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's... Yeah, certainly it's, you guys should, can and should look at these. Um, <coughs> there may be things that come up that just from a big picture, these are being, these are being developed in a silo. And you guys are certainly going to be able to, to see... <laughs> economic development ones that may come out or um, natural resources ones that may come out that are just uh, too far out there. I could think of any number of possibilities that we could look at. Um, you know, um, the transportation committee comes out hypothetically and says no more cars in the downtown. And we just go through and say, I know that's their, their aspiration and their goal in light of what we think is reality, that's just one we're going to have to adjust and move out of because we don't think we can have economic development and housing in our downtown if we don't have parking as much as they want to, you know. And maybe it's when we go back and talk to them and go and say, we don't think this is this is a, a direction that, from a policy standpoint, and city council is going to have the same option. When it gets to them, these are the wish lists of these um Silos, right? And I and, guess that's the question. And is, you is, can go through and say that you guys are asking for way too much. There's no way we could, you know, based on this. Yeah, and I just and that's sort of what I'm. The core of the question is is like, given that these are wish lists, do you know? Do we have? Is there some expectation that the commission is going to say, sure, it's a wish list, but it's limited. You know, we have to think about it in terms of like. Reasonable. <laughs> well, what's reasonable, reasonable in an eight-year window? You know, what, what, is, yes. what is what is reasonably plausible given the you know economic constraints of the city and, and and you know what is what do we put forward as a visioning you know plan for the town for the next eight years? This is this is my understanding. and might correct me if 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 I'm off base on anything. I mean, it's this planning commission will be making a suggestion to the to the city council. So I I my understanding is we can change what we want. I think that in, along the way, though, that it uh, we should be, you know, uh, um, conscientious of the other committees and let them know what we're changing, and they'll have an sure. opportunity yeah. to go separately themselves to city council and say, we really want to get rid of cars, and the city and planning commission took that out. So I think that that would be like how we should try to uh, work with this along the way. But uh, what I'm getting at is, I don't think we should be afraid to make changes. Um, and, and to make it our own. Uh, 
I, I, th I think one question I do have right now, because we're all, this the whole point of this meeting tonight, which is this is a really great discussion, is to figure out what process works for us in going through this. And I think one question that we should try to resolve right now is, do we, do we want to more or less approach this as a, we want to send some feedback right now to the drafters of these chapters? And think of it that way, and send some sort of give give Mike some more like amorphous, maybe not completely ironed out things, which we've I've heard some of those suggestions tonight. Or on the other hand, do we want to go ahead and just take some ownership and make some and do some rewrites, basically, which I've heard some people suggest things like that. I've also heard some people tonight not want to go down that road of rewriting like that. So I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna I just want to throw that back out to everyone else, you included Mike, and, and say like. You know what approach between those two or something in between do we want to try to take with these chapters i think part of it is us figuring out exactly what we want from each group so for that your example archaeological sensitive areas i want to know well is that something that's in their work plan for the next eight years is that something that they that's what they want to use their limited staff time for or is it or do they have right. work plan right. ideas mm -hmm. and right. then if not is there funding that they've identified for that? And what sort of timeline do they think that might happen in? So for some of the removed cars in the downtown, obviously that's not going to be in the purview of the Transportation Committee to do. But for the things that are a little bit more reasonable, like archaeological sensitive areas, have they thought through those things? And if they present something to us and say, here are the 10 surveys we want, here are different funding sources and a different timeline of when we want to do each of those things, and how we can actually implement that in eight years. Ooh. Great. Then I'm not in any place to want to say, okay, that isn't important. It doesn't. If it's something that they can do and that is reasonable, yeah. right? So, but without knowing that context, it would be really hard to edit this down. Yeah. So now it is like just a should. wish list. Right. It's really right. Just yeah. So is it a wish list, or can and, we make it a work plan? <laughs> and and I thought one of your points too, Mike, was to make sure that whatever we put in this is something that will get done. It, it may not necessarily that everything gets done because things, you just never know how things are going to change over the eight years, but these were the things that um, that they wanted to work on in the next eight years. Um, I mean, something... It just seems like there's a lot here and it, the potential is to have a lot of things unfulfilled. So, you know, yeah, you it may be, plan, it, that's great. I, yeah. yeah. I, so I, I guess that'd be a question to ask them. You know, is this just a wish, or do you have some kind of a plan? So one thing I'm hearing is that as we go through these chapters, to that maybe we can we can make a habit of creating a feedback list and a question list to send back to the committees to get further information. Something that we should just do that for each one. Yeah, or okay. maybe I think giving them a clear framework, like how much of a difference will this make, and then how much resources will this take? Because there are some yeah. things that. May not make much of a difference, but may not take any resources, and then there are others that will make a huge difference and also not take many resources. And then there are probably plenty of things that will take lots of resources and may not make much of a difference. And I think those are the ones that we should be, you know, finding and, yeah. and probably culling from this. Um, it's like an impact feasibility assessment. Like what's the yeah. Rate your impact for this action, and what's the actual feasibility of it and resource yeah. needs. So like on a scale of 1 to 10 for all of these items, put a score, and then... You're just going to get a bunch of 10s. <laughs> just yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wouldn't put it in the list if it wasn't a 10. <laughs> <laughs> but it could, it could, even if it was just to go through and give a priority, what are the okay. things that are the most... Because I know from their standpoint the things that they want to look at. If I were to go and guess what they want to do, most in their understanding is to go through and continue to do more, to do new historic districts. So our current historic district is, is done. It's that's as big as they're going to let us get. But there are a number of smaller historic districts that could also be made, including like the meadow. The meadow is not a historic district, but it easily could be. They're all of a similar age. They're all built of a similar style. There's value of protecting that. Uh, up in the college and College Street, that's currently not in the historic district, but really the college, that entire area, could be its own historic district. I think those are the areas that the HPC really wants to prioritize. Um, and then um, maybe the, uh, the scenic pieces that we had talked about here at the last meeting, talking about the dome. Um, 
do we want to have some view shed protection for the dome in certain areas? Well, we don't, you know, we have that survey from 2002. And so maybe that survey's done. Maybe we just go and say that survey is still valid. That's the one that we should work on. And we should just um, put that into the, put that into the regulation. So um, I think those were the areas that from an understanding standpoint and from a protection standpoint, um, those were two areas they really wanted to work on. And then the other big piece for them was to, to work on those outreach pieces. Um, they really wanted to get more, you know, on the website and have, have the historic preservation, whether it's historic preservation or I think there's also a private organization, Montpelier Heritage Group. Yeah, are they active now? They they aren't, but those were those. They they're like we should have we should have that group back doing more again because we need to be interacting with the public and getting the public to understand and value our historic resources again. Um, and I think there are pieces, you know, as John pointed out, there are pieces that we have gaps that need to be fixed. You know, we had a had it's better under the new process and rules that we have. But I think the new design review, review rules will also help to fix those inconsistencies that we had. You know, we have our goal for preservation is to use a lot of regulations, but those regulations were not fairly and evenly enforced, and that created a lot of unhappiness um, with a number of people, some of whom felt we should be enforcing to the strict guidelines and others that felt that it was, you know, the exceptions were not being handed out on a consistent basis. So we really just needed to have rules that were more consistent and fair. And I think that would be helping a number of people. I think some people would not be happy being in, but at least a fair process would give them a better understanding. And aside from knowing the level of impact and resources needed. I think one thing that would be helpful, at least for me, is to recognize, is it sort of gets a responsibility, but also asking the question, are there other levels of government that do this or are responsible for it? Be it the federal government, the regional government, or state government, um, in helping us prioritize, because we, we can be guilty sometimes of reinventing the wheel in Montpelier where we're like, we're going to create an ordinance that does this when there's maybe some state regulations that do exactly some, something really very similar. Yeah. And, and I'm, I, not, I'm not seeing anything specific here. I'm just... And, and you will get some of those, and those are some of the questions that um, have come up when I've worked with some other groups as well, where people are like, oh, we should have a program that does this. And I'm like, well... You know, I think I made that comment with the energy plan, where we should be doing something to um, have funding to assist homeowners in this. And I'm like, well, Efficiency Vermont does that. I think our goal should be to connect people to them, um, to, to educate people on the resources that are available rather than creating new ones. Now, if there are ones when we get to energy, that missing. if there are gaps that are, there are in there. Gaps. Um, but I think that was some of the points that we're trying to do is we're, we're, we don't want to be reinventing it. And same with housing. Um, you know, we will, we will, you know, I'm responsible for trying to get 240 new housing units, but I will not pound one nail. I will not build one house. Um, you know, we're here to do things that help our partners that will provide those services or provide that housing. Um, but we aren't going to provide any housing. So find ways to encourage other groups that yeah. are already doing the work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think in this one, the only one I think I can think of is is when we were starting to talk about coordinating these outreach programs and trying to coordinate them with our partners. I think there was maybe a, a goal that got to that effect or a, a strategy that got to that effect. Expand partnerships with yeah. educational institutions, at least. There's that one. Yeah. Uh, well, the other thing, too... I mean, I know from teaching architectural history that a lot of the resources I got were from the state and from the State Division of Historic Preservation. So, yeah. um, you know, that if they could identify that they would be working with the state as well, 
Yeah, I, th- I mean, I think the first strategy that was, I think why it came out as their first strategy under goal B was to establish a program to coordinate, collaborate, and sponsor educational events with current and potential partners, Montpelier Alive, Division of Historic Preservation, Montpelier Heritage Group, Preservation Trust of Vermont, Vermont Folk Life Center, Vermont Humanities Council, the Kellogg Hubbard Library, UVM Preservation Program, local historical societies and other similar organizations around the topic of historic and cultural resources. So I think their idea was that we would have a, a you know a program, a person who would assist in doing some of those. In this case, I think a lot of that would be some of the HPC members themselves. They're very well connected in these groups, anyways. But um, but to have a formal um, program that would let them be able to say this is this is what we're going to do. We're not we're not doing it as much as we are coordinating, collaborating, and sponsoring. Is, um, is this is this really a report from the committee or um, really our implementation strategy for um, historic cultural resources? And I guess the reason I'm asking is stepping back. They have a very specific maybe purview expertise and have been focusing on elements of our mostly historic resources, but are we missing our definition of what a cultural resource is? Is it, is it all captured? That's a good point. I was going to ask you, I don't know what a cultural resource is here, and I would like to know I that. Think, I think, like, art is another thing that, unless there's somewhere else in the city plan that's appropriate, that something should be addressed. Public right. art? All forms. Performance. Is there another section on cultural or is it is this it? Um, this is this is where it is. I mean, obviously, a number of things can fall into. There's community services. There's other places, but this is. I think I think um, the state planning goal is historic, cultural, and scenic lumped together. Oh. I, I think that's. That sounds right. Yeah, I think it's historic, historic cultural, cultural, and scenic. scenic. We're all tied together in, if you look at the state land use goals for why zoning and planning, that statute is one of the 12, 13 goals. Um, one of them is historic, scenic, and cultural resources, the preservation and protection of them. So it does seem like art is moving, <coughs> and I don't see it. Yeah. No, I, I think we have some good point. The, the, That's the a good role catch. Of That's one that I should. Because we do have a an arts public art commission now, and I'll see if um, add art. Um. It seems like there are a number of other cultural resources that could, we could identify mm-hmm. beyond that. I don't. I just don't know how they get captured. That's all. Yep, yeah. and, and there are various ways we could do it. I mean, we could obviously just leave this chapter as the historic resources and have a separate chapter for cultural resources. We can, if we if we think they they net and, and kind of come together well, we can just start to work them in. There probably won't be much. Um, well, maybe there is understanding cultural resources. Um, but what else but is there more outside, from, outside of art? Like, let's think about it. well, performance. I mean, there's you know, but basically they all fall everything art, that though. Yeah. happens in the downtown area. There's music, music, right? I mean, right. When we think of Montpelier and cultural resources, what do we value? I mean, oh, all really significant places do. Mm-hmm. I mean, somebody. I've, Somebody might argue um, the uh, religious institutions could be a cultural resource, the various ones that we have. Right, you, could, would, you know, it yeah. could become what, very broad. Yeah, I mean, I so think the, his, the HPC may look at the, at the churches and synagogues as the buildings um, and not necessarily the... Community. The, yeah. yeah, the cultural resource that... We would our farmers market. Does, yeah, I know. Like I was thinking that. Resource, yeah. Know. So are those things that? I mean, would it make sense mm-hmm. then to separate that into a different chapter? 
Arts and culture. Arts and culture, yeah. Because mm -hmm. we can have as many chapters as we like. There's no, we just have certain, uh, certain chapters we have to have, but you can always have more chapters. So, so can you tell us more about this Public Arts Commission? Like, is that, is that a, it how, was, to what extent can we rely on? It was recently oh. created. They just um, did a report. Does this look Public Arts did Master it? Plan. Yes. Yeah. So um, it was something that started before I got here. Um, uh, when the previous director was here, we got an NEA grant, or we had applied for an NEA grant. We got denied. We reapplied, and we got funded the first year I was here to do a public art master plan. And it took a couple of years to get through the process of developing that. And one of the recommendations was um, that we should put money aside and create a public art commission. And it was kind of meant to capture, um, I think, what was recognized by our outside consultant that came in and they came in from another state and they looked at and it was remarkable how few public art and how little public art we have for being the capital um and but we have for, a lot of attorneys we have a lot of attorneys <laughs> <laughs> so we, we should have the statue of the attorney at the roundabout we have a roundabout with an attorney with the <laughs> Um, and having having previously worked in Barry City, which is you know full of um, granite art, yeah. you know a lot of art from the um, the Burns Memorial to the, the um, various pieces that were are throughout the city. Zipper. And, and then the giant biggest, zipper. Yeah. Yep, the giant zipper. They did a number of new ones um, after either, right after I left. Um, all of their bike racks were all full of gargoyle things. Full of gargoyles and so they did it they're doing a number of nice pieces over there and I think that's what when our consultant came in and took a look at Montpelier they were like you guys are the capital city and, <laughs> like, and where's you can go that? take kids and go through and say all right everyone yes. go out and find us some public art somewhere and just and there really isn't any and I think that's what they were trying to do is not necessarily that we need to have a giant statue in, in downtown somewhere but you know, there's a lot of things from a lot of other communities. Um, and, and so that was the goal of the Public Arts Commission, is to help to go through and sponsor. The first piece of public art is supposed to be going in with the transit center. So there's a- it, It's already is, there. Is it already there? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I haven't. The, one, the exterior one. The so that was supposed to be the first one where we would commission a, a piece of art and that we would start looking for other places and as projects come forward can we find other places where um, it can be incorporated into um, it was part of the discussion of the parking garage if that ever comes forward that it's got um, the, the, the skeins that are on the outside are changeable and that as you look at them at certain angles you'd be able to see certain images in in the sides of the parking garage um, and we could change them from year to year. That's part of the, the plan for that. But are there other places? And that's what the Public Arts Commission was supposed to look at and making sure that we are not just the Lost Nation Theater, but that we are, you know, um, mm -hmm. and certainly we have a lot of art here, actually, but mm -hmm. just not the public art. We have the performing arts, we have theater, we are. Um, the th things worth putting in the plan to support those things, yeah. to continue to support yeah. them. Yep. Um, yeah draw attention so, to them. So, yeah. yeah. So the public art plus the existing. So maybe, art. so the thought, the opinion, maybe we keep this as the historic resources and take what we had, arts and culture? Arts, was and, culture. arts and culture. Yeah. Is, it, it is another good reason to do that because this would fit nicely with like the design review regulations and there's different regulations slash, I don't know what kind of regulations mm -hmm. over the culture and art piece. It's sort of a different, we don't necessarily want yeah. It's not something that's regulatory. Yeah. Right, exactly. It's more, it's more of so maybe breaking to it offer out support. wouldn't yes. be a bad call. Sounds. Yeah. And I, I also want to mention the um, the, the parades and, and events that are put on mm. by the community mm -hmm. that are art mm -hmm. and performance art oriented mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that exists. I mean, I think those things are worth mentioning something that we want to continue. The work that I'm excited about is doing. doing. Not just the yeah. city, though, but like the All Species Day and stuff like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Species Day. That's definitely part of our culture. Right? Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
Something that makes us unique. Okay. I just need to, I don't have anything to do with this thought yet, but I just need to toss out that I don't see, this may be more appropriate for the culture if we're going to break that out, but I don't see a whole lot of like mention of striving to understand diverse histories in our space, and I don't know exactly what that would look like or if they care about that, but I think it, maybe we could care about that yeah. and encourage them to name that somehow. I, I don't know exactly know how we would go about do, like what the strategies would be, but diversity is important and it might be great to name that. Certainly under the archaeological sensitive Archaeological areas, sensitive areas is one thing. Yep, yeah, for sure. Do, and Mike, do you feel like you have notes or should we go through a list of feedback to pass on like we were talking about I, before? I can I can go back and work with work with them to see maybe ask them some some questions. Yeah, I mean, as you said, the other option is we go through and we make adjustments and then kind of let them know and let them I figure respond. I, I figure we will do that, mm -hmm. but wait to get the feedback that we talked about first. Is everyone uh, yes. comfortable so, with that? So, so for now, we'll come up with the questions we want to ask based on what we have. Yeah. Once we get that back, we'll we'll plan to rewrite more. Or okay, less. we'll be a little more like we'll, we'll ask questions first. We'll ask and then we'll then ask we'll questions. <laughs> and, and forceful. Once we're more informed, okay, okay. we'll, we'll make it our own, okay. and and we'll and we should, and if you would, Mike, um, as we go through this, let let the other committees know that that's the approach that we're planning to take. Um. And then, I mean, at some point, right, we're, and then maybe after that step, then we post it online and yeah. solicit public feedback. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. that's where that comes in. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we, we're going to have to have the, the, the public input um, phase. And I think in the past, what used to happen is the planning commission would write all the chapters and then send them out to the commission. In this case, we just sent them to the commission, and we're just adding an extra step in there. But at some point, we've got to have an extensive amount of public input, because obviously any of these is going to, are going to need the public support. I also think that maybe next week um, we could plan to spend time writing out what we talked about, about the culture and art piece, with the understanding that yeah, some public art input will come from the Public Art Commission. But I don't think we're going to have any other committee that exists that's going to be able to do what we were just talking about, about culture and arts. Maybe we can plan to write that ourselves next week. Mm. Maybe we'll, scan the yeah. too. We'll, we'll ask them at the Can same time. Them? Yeah, an and, and I'm not going to assume, though, that we'll get anything <laughs> yeah. from them. It's a fairly new commission. What yeah. about, like, um, not feeling you're alive? Yeah, I think getting your involvement, too. Yeah. So should we go over, just brainstorm the questions we want to Put back to this, this work I, I think it's worth doing. I mean, Mike has some notes, but I think it's worth. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we get what exactly. We yeah, I can think I, that that's great. Before we get to questions, can I ask about a more bullet on the back? In con consultation with the Historic Preservation Commission, the Planning Commission will participate in Act 250 and Section 248 processes where historic and archaeological resources may be impacted. Has that happened in the past? No, is that no, it, it hasn't. I mean, they can seek to intervene in those processes. I don't think there's anything we can do to stop it, but... but we have the, we have have the, the planning, commission, planning Commission and City Council have statutory standing. Um, so usually what happens is if... The Planning Commission does. If the plan, yeah, the Planning Commission does. So usually if, if it were, let's say, um, the Conservation Commission had a concern about a project, they can they can sometimes actually get standing. Conservation commissions can sometimes get standing too. But um, a lot of times, people will go to the planning commissions or their city councils and go and say, "Can you guys intervene on our behalf?" Yeah. Okay, so this is not out of left field. This is something that has no, we get very few Act Two Fifty permits, so it doesn't really come up. Yeah. Um, I could see potentially uh, if if one were coming up, I could see. A 248 potentially. Two solar panels on Somebody, roofs. Somebody's putting, um, yeah, somebody decides they're going to put solar panels or, or a um, telecommunication tower 
yeah. on the side of a church spire and they're like hey 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 you can't you know you can do it that way you can do it that way but you can't do it the way it's being proposed um, because it's going to have an impact on on that historic resource yeah um, okay. again I don't see very many of them but in this case it's saying we will participate do we want to say that we may participate <laughs> <laughs> right yeah by yeah, all means it's your every time we're gonna get called um yeah you want to change will to may so this also says, yeah, will when the resources may be impacted. So that's quite broad. Yeah. Or yeah. May, may may participate when they will be impacted. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> <most scary>. <laughs> it feels like this is them telling us that we need to be in consultation with them when these things come up. Wouldn't it? I'll mm, go with yeah. Is that the point of the bullet? Perhaps. Yeah. I feel like this. Is, Wouldn't our regulations? This is a, this is a, this is a landmine. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm serious. I, this is a landmine, and we it shouldn't be codified in the city plan. Right. I, I feel like we have regulations, yeah, and we have <laughs> our own review process. Why yeah, would we? There's, there's no reason to get involved. So Don't these things have to? Be telecommunication stuff that we're exempt from reviewing. These have to be in. Uh, in accordance with town plans anyways, right? Doesn't the PC um, yeah, there's considers a whole, it anyways. There's a whole subset that, well, that's another piece that I'm sure that we're going to be using the TPS on. And, uh, yeah, I think it would be good to be clear in this plan on, on how it should be interpreted in any regular state regulatory proceedings. And I think that we should be clear that our bylaws are how we want to regulate development and not use the municipal plan for state regulatory purposes. That's oh, I see. That's like, just cover. So, 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 so it's not even worth asking to you for feedback on this one. I mean, the only, the only piece I would say, um, yes, I'm not a giant fan of Act 250. Uh, the only exception I would have is, is the 248, we're, we're barred from being able to yeah. regulate in 248. And if a project came up that would have a negative impact on a historic resource, this would be our only avenue for participating. Right. Although we could probably include a clause referring to our bylaws as the interpretation of the plan saying review our bylaws will work. work. That doesn't work? Nope. It's got to be a town plan. That's how you, that's how you get deference. But, but in... By but adopting the bylaws essentially as part of your doesn't work plan. That's the the PUC has been stubborn. But I will a caveat with this. So since they did I, I keep I came up with the number. Four years ago there there was statutory change that Act One There is there is now a path forward in the the DPS will walk us through that, like what we have to put where in the town plan, so that when right. it goes in front for one seventy four, and we have yeah one seventy four yeah. approves. Yeah, but it's still, I'm pretty sure that it still say. can't be in the bylaws. It has to be. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's just the energy. In, it, yeah. We're also covered by the regional plan um, as well. Does the energy committee take up energy siting? Do, do we have preferred sites? Mm -mm. Okay. Yeah. No, not yet. They, t they didn't identify this. The well, we would have to adopt them into our. There's, there's, right. a, there they, are they, maps they, that we could adopt. But there's that state we have. preferred but they, sites. But they did the identification maps. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I just um, We walked through all that. Yeah. We should. Hey, you know, so so it sounds like there is a process that exists where we may be involved with Act 250. Scenarios exist where that may happen. It being in this plan or not being this plan isn't really going to affect that, and so all this does is possibly muddle things. So oh, what I'm a, hearing, that's no, a landmine. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> no I'm, 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 I'm with you. I'm with no, you. No, we, we shouldn't put it yeah, in there. Absolutely. Somebody will step on it. So eliminate it. Yeah. 
can only, can only don't, you don't want to adjust it uh, to, to just go and give us the option to participate or it's, I mean I, I think regardless of whether or not we have it in a town plan we have we options to we do it pass. I don't think that we ought to affirmatively <laughs> no the certain, certainly the will certainly the will participate is <laughs> it has to go um, so your thought is just to remove that altogether but you were just saying I think we should I mean I, I can't speak to the Act 250 piece but the 248 piece, like, yeah, it's like 174. We just follow that. we follow those, yeah, we follow that path and we get to where we need to be so that we recovered if and when something comes down the pipeline. That next strategy, I mean, that's also, I guess, I would also, I mean, the section 106 review is for federally, for federally funded. You know, a historic preservation review for federal funding. I don't. Is I that don't. even possible? I had I had some questions on that when I read that one. Um, <clears throat> first of all, they they said adopt the policy. I couldn't see how this would be a policy. Um, any section one hundred and six responses involving historic resources be provided. And I had a question to the HPC. Or, or I I don't see. I mean, I don't see where I don't see a section one hundred and six report is a section one hundred and six report. I don't know if it needs comment from the HPC. Is that the I kind that of report like they would have done for the um, French block? Yeah. The, it was, yeah. Right. Anytime. But I, don't, I don't understand. It's like they don't trust the State Historic Preservation Office to, right. to so protect their interests. It seems a little. Yeah. And I'm not even sure what, you know, legally how they are. What's the section 106 response? Uh, well, you have to get a. I don't know if I'm saying this right, but you have to get a section 106. Like if you're getting a, doing a housing project that has federal funding, you have to get a review mm -hmm. from a historic preservation consultant, and then the state historic preservation office reviews that letter as well so to the, decide whether historic preservation resources are. It has become yeah. somewhat of a standard process. So we have used section 106 reports in non-federal projects before when somebody comes up like they want to demolish. Um, a historic structure and it's going through the um, local zoning, we might request a Section 106 report to be presented to the DRB just because it gives an understanding of what the resources are that, that are there that could be lost. I mean, it doesn't say what you can't, it just says this is what's here. So you hire a historic preservation consultant to do that? That we would have the if, if somebody were to demol uh, demolish, there's uh, there are a couple of places where you can have, it's there's the option to have a Section 106 report. They're usually not that expensive, and we can ask the applicant to present that as additional <coughs> technical. I think the concern here might actually be that uh, <coughs> that the state might be advocating to preserve something, and they might envision a scenario where city council, you know, on behalf of a constituent, goes and says. City doesn't care about this, you know. Let them tear it down or do whatever you like. And what they're saying is, the city needs to. Um, whoever's submitting this needs to consult with the HPC so they understand. Oh, like who's ever doing the Section One Hundred and Six review? Right. This is a consult with. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's clear to me because that's. I'm not so, sure. Or I'm if, just if that's the intention, yeah. Because the state does a pretty good job in re responding, so like, why would we? And I'm trying yeah, to think, and why would they? What's the concern there? And it might be that the city gets involved with that. Yeah, and then the question I would come up with again comes back to start of you know a policy. I mean, there's no way we'd be able to enforce that yeah. even if we said ordinance. I mean, the only way we could we were able to loop it in before was it was part of the demolition in a zoning permit. We could say as an application requirement, you have to provide us with a report so we can understand. Again, this just seems like a preference for best practice. It, yeah, it, sure. It like, seems like the HPC wants to be involved when there's an approval process involving the city if we could write maybe a or ask them if for a vague or or if not you know more broadly phrased strategy to to get them involved without specifically trying to can't do it in these ways mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, do we want, um, so who has questions for Mike um, to send back? Stephanie, your questions were good. <laughs> what were they? Yeah, <laughs> so things that are, they continue versus new tasks, um, things that are in their work plan or in someone else's purview, responsible entities for each, so that, that's the same thing. It's them or somebody else. Um, identification of funding where necessary. Yeah, I had prioritized cost and feasibility yeah. who um, uh, I don't know how to frame the question but like ask like how the specific strategies that are being proposed sort of f further like the other goals like um, how do they support the specific goals yeah basically like I guess the notion is like, how does an archaeologically sensitive, how does a survey of archaeologically sensitive areas, like what, what goals does that further, or is it just, are we just doing a survey to do the survey and you don't have a clear understanding of what that information, what that data is? I'd like to know more about that one too. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like well, I think that was it was to further the understanding of the historic resources, but the question is. Do those exist at all? <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I believe they do. There, there are. There are archaeologically sensitive areas we do have to go through okay. when, we, when we get these projects. I know that's part of. Okay. Um, I mean, there was in some cases, arche archaeology is anything that's that's below ground, so it doesn't necessarily <coughs> mean Native American. I, it not, could be archaeological in the sense of right, there were I'm foundations not, from this 18th century. Yeah, I'm not suggesting that the, the survey of archaeologically sensitive areas is problematic for me. It's just that's an example. Like, if they can articulate for these strategy, like. What is this further? I mean, yeah, that, that was, would, in their case, I think they would answer that. That was their strategy to improve our understanding of our historic resources. We don't know where they are. Um, we don't have any way of determining whether there's a lot of them or not a lot of them. Is there, are they all concentrated in one area? Um, are we, do we have significant ones that we just don't know about and that we should be doing more to protect them before somebody built a parking lot over the first cemetery in Montpelier. You know, we should have an idea of where these things might be. Um, we don't have that already. I'm surprised that there's not some kind of. Well, we know, certainly don't state. have a map anywhere that we've that we have when a project comes in for us to go through and evaluate that goes and says, "Oh, you're in you're in an archaeologically sensitive area." Um, sure. And when I, I worked. I've worked in a number of places in Vermont, um, and I work for the Northwest RPC, and obviously we've got Highgate and Swanton and those areas which have large Indian burial grounds and, and structures, and having a map of the archaeologically sensitive areas was important to being able to implement their protection strategies. How important that is for us out here. Um, there was a Rivers map, a Rivers book. There's actually it's a big book that was done in the 80s. And the archaeologically sensitive band does come through Montpelier. Um, what was the basis of that? I don't know, but it, it certainly was there. We were certainly identified at that time as having the potential for Native American archaeological resources, but I have no idea how significant that potential was. Um, but I think that's what the study would determine, is if there's stuff there that we should be conscious of as we develop. Maybe it's just a matter of adding a little <coughs> to each bullet or, you know, conduct a survey in order to <coughs> have a baseline. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm not trying to make it onerous, but I think just having them have that, like doing that mental exercise of saying, like, really, what are we trying to do sure, by doing okay. this might be helpful in them sort of prioritizing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I, I just don't know what some of these things. I don't know if we're just doing it for the sake of doing it or if there's... Right. Is there a def definition of culturally sensitive areas? That's one I have a, the question mark for. I would have to hear from them as to what... It would be nice but, to hear what they what they think, yeah. just so we make sure we're capturing it. I mean, we may be, in this case, as we said, we talked about maybe putting um, art and culture into a different chapter, so that may go away. 
but we'll yeah. see what they had in mind when they were talking about culturally sensitive areas. Yeah, because if, if we do lift it into a new term, we want to make sure we take what they meant with us. Yeah. Um, Mike, I have a really quick question, um, and I don't want you to take anything off topic, but on page three, they talk about establishing a program to identify endangered historic buildings. Is endangered historic building a term of art that I'm not aware of? Uh, like no, it's <laughs> this is this comes from the result of um, <coughs> the two rivers um, out at Agway. Mm -hmm. There's that um, the homestead that is falling into disrepair, and the city um, did a public nuisance on it, and so it's, we declared that it should be torn down, and now they're trying to pull together a bunch of folks so they could go through and kind of rescue that structure, and that kind of came up to go through from their perspective on the HPC that um, maybe we should be more proactive instead of reactive to these. We shouldn't wait till the city declares that it's time to tear this building down um, before the HPC thought they should be maybe getting involved to see where they could identify historic resources that are falling into disrepair and to kind of address them at an earlier stage. I think the bigger question on that one, I think it's a it's a admirable idea. Um, I think it'll come down to the amount of resources. And I assume these would be endangered historic buildings that are not on these other surveys. I mean, it, they might be on these other surveys. Um, we may have ones that are, I can't think of any off the top of my head. Maybe there's one that's downtown in the historic district that's falling into disrepair that, for whatever reason. Yeah, it, it just seems to me like it's a little bit overlapping with the survey. Like if we have a survey of our important resources, then when something happens to one of them, they could... Yeah, I think the program in this case is, the program is to get involved. I think the, the first one is to understand, and you could go through and understand where these endangered buildings are, but I think this one here was more of a, of a proactive, we should, have, we should have a program to do something about it as well. To identify it beforehand, and then I like, then do something and about do it. And do something about it. <clears throat> like the, the houses on Court Street. Like the houses that got torn down on Court Street, yeah. yeah. Um, for folks that weren't here before, there was, the, I believe it was in the insurance companies? Oh, Maybe. because they were expanding their parking lot? Yeah. yeah, and so they wanted to take out some historic buildings, and so basically it event ended up being demo demolition by neglect, um, by letting them kind of fall into disrepair to the point that they couldn't be rehabbed. When was that? I don't that was a long time ago. It was, it was before me, but it was one of these ones that Eric Gilbertson and folks will tell you, can tell you the story of. Now they have a parking lot. The now they have taxes. a parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> but it was crappy, probably, while we all had to watch those buildings look horrible for years and years. So I get why they'd want to not have that happen. It's right. from a, uh, like, right. It's like, the, you know, if the wanted to expand their parking lot, they bought the building, and then they just let it sit there. Right. Then maybe nobody's paying attention. So I guess, you know, HBC wants to be paying yeah. attention. I mean, there's a fine line, I guess. I don't want it to be redundant or, like, heavy-handed, but also it's, it's just pretty obnoxious when buildings just sit there. Oh. To get oh. around the, you know, yeah. the regulation, and there's nothing to do about it. I guess I just don't under, I don't really understand it, because it doesn't seem like you're endangered until you're endangered like how do you foresee the danger <laughs> like like the um, that property you were talking about um, unoccupied for a certain length of time and repairs not being made okay yeah I guess so you sort of think about clear to say that in any way but yeah. Yeah, I'm splitting you know a little bit yeah getting too into the definitely house. there's got to be some definition section in this whole plan right we got to define stuff so. yeah and there, I mean there was a certain amount of um, how much we put into it, um, like I said, eventually it would be nice to have these things being able to link to other things where you can expound on them. At this point, we just you know need to know that we're going to identify this or we're going to study this or we're, we're going to do it. But you know, then you could link and have more details of what that means. And but we weren't going to go through and expand on these um, until we kind of knew that's what 
we were all comfortable with. And you know, to put a lot of time into something that gets removed later on didn't seem to make a lot of sense. But at the same time, if there are things that we should, in, in certain cases, and whether it's this one or whether it's housing, um, some of them are more detailed than others. And maybe some of these ones do need to have a little bit more added to them it, just to provide a little more, you know, Clear. just compiling oral histories of, of Montpelier residents. Why? Yeah. Then you know, why? maybe it needs to have more than just that. Yeah. And this one, I feel like there we also need some more, some clearer benchmarks or metrics. Like if we're putting stuff, if we're adding places to the historic register, how many would we have to add for us to be considered, you know, successful in checking that? Is that? Yeah, let's, let's ask that a strategy? about that. Because there really aren't any benchmarks in this one. So how do they know when they've increased the appreciation? Is there a measure? Yeah. Right. And if it's like develop new educational programs such as blah, 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 well, can we say like develop at least one educate, you know, think of it in terms of, can we check that box? Maybe it would be a percentage increase in, because when it came to their strategy to increase the number of houses in Sometimes it becomes state. really difficult to, to put a benchmark to it. I mean, like I said, community appreciation, how do you really judge that, I think? But I do think we can we can put more benchmarks onto some of the strategies. I think developing at least one or those types of things are, make a good... I mean, they could survey the, the city and then determine... But at a certain point is I'm not going to go through and survey the city. Not you, no. <laughs> this is all for them to do. This is HPC's work. So, I mean, there's a, a lot here that they say they're going to be doing, so... Yeah, and I feel like, right, asking them to at least start thinking about quantifying, then they might call some. <laughs> Perhaps. Yes, that's true. Mike, if you think that actually adding new design review districts is really important to them, I think it's only in this one little bullet. If appropriate, amend the boundary of the design review district to include more or less of the city, depending on the purpose of the district and the goals of the city. That's like super... It, it to is. The other ones, which are really heavy handed. I think there's, a, I think there's a mix out there. Uh, I think there's a mix of opinions on the planning commission on, on how much design review. I mean, we just had the conversation of um, some of it. And I think they're caught in the same thing. Is I think they would like to see more design review, more than just the area that it is it would right now. It be ironic for us to pass a city plan where we wish that there would we would add more in which we just had the opportunity to do so and decided not to. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, some it's of like this. some of the they, they district decide. sort of thing, something that we didn't talk about, if that's what they're asking, if that's what they're interested in. I, I think, uh, as I said, I think it goes back the to the district, yeah. initial, the, the, the meadow. They're, you know, just... Right. The first, you know, they, they want to go through and have a historic district that includes the meadow. They make the meadow, then they would, then their follow up would be now that we've have the historic district out there, we should have some design review standards out there as well. I think what is their opinion and their goals, that's, that's I think, where you're going to have the harder, the more challenge to go through and say, yeah, that's their goal. I don't know. Are we going to? also support that and put that in our plan that that's going to be our plan or are we going to go through and say we're all for more studies to understand and do and to catalog those historic resources out there but I don't know if we're ready to take the next step to then require the design review standards out there as well considering we don't in a number of areas currently um, you know Loomis and Liberty Street are currently in our historic district and not in our design review are we going to survey the meadow and then put them in and still leave Loomis out yep. it seems like something higher level like uh, considering all of these new informations and how things evolve and amending our bylaws so that they make sense can catch a lot of these things as opposed to like <coughs> hypotheticals and vague ideas around consider that or something very specific, you know. 
Yeah, we are trying to be more specific in here, and I think that is our hope is not to support and encourage, but to get in and but consider would probably be an okay. If, or, I guess, but, amend our bylaws, you know, in the interest of the city based on <coughs> new information and et cetera. But mm -hmm. we're going to be doing that anyway. I think I'm just feeling like the last few meetings I feel like we I want from them just more just tell me what it is you want don't say it in a way that doesn't make sense and then we have to ask all these back and forth questions I just want to know like if that's what you want I want to know this doesn't tell me that that's what they want is new design review districts whether or not we decide to keep that in is one thing I just want to know what they want and perhaps that's like the benchmark like if they can get support for two new design districts and two separate parts or, dis or historic districts, then you have achieved a city that appreciates and um, values but, I mean, that. Oops. Um, I mean, I think the Historic Preservation Commission can have goals that aren't in the city plan, right? Sure, yeah. yeah. Oh, I think so. I yeah. mean, because this to me seems like, right, they're going to plan for the next design review, you know, to have their... Yeah, like that would be beneficial for them to say it out loud. Like if that's what they really want, then claim it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is true. Yeah, and, and I mean, ultimately, this is the the city's historic resources plan. It's not historic preservation commission's plan. plan. So yeah. they're developing the plan that we're gonna massage and adjust. And I, I think it may not be a hundred percent of what they want. Um, we should be comfortable doing what Mike just said, and that's taking the aspirations from a committee and translating them into something that works for the city. And I think John had a good example earlier uh, talking about uh, the possibility of <clears throat> expanding the design review boundary. Would That might be what they want specifically, but for us it would be about talking about a process to look at the, the design review boundary and just, and going along the process lines, right, um, at the macro level as opposed to making, putting the cart before the horse kind of thing. Um, but we can also decide to leave it out entirely. Maybe this is too heavy-handed, but does it make sense? when Mike types up his notes for us to review them before they go to the Historic Preservation Commission, just to make sure that we feel like we all got... Got everything in there that we want to say. There that we want to say. How do we do that with... Times. How do we do that without running afoul of uh, open yeah. meetings? Oh, okay. Right. So what I if, forgot about can, that. What if... Um, you know, Mike, if you do this in Google Docs and we just all add comments and that's just open and visible for anybody that way you know we're reviewing it and they can see where there's even if someone's comment gets answered and we're like oh ignore that I don't think there's any we have anything to, like to, to hide or and the, we can I do it all mm -hmm. are we allowed to give feedback directly to you yeah not yeah I was gonna say we could people? do the Google Docs idea as long as we were just putting our own ideas in it and not getting into conversations about it i mean it can be an open document that we all work on but it's if you know stephanie is asking john questions even that's not well if there's questions it's, it's public it's, it's all it's a public open document you can't yeah. argue it for me for it to be more open. <laughs> <laughs> we could do that and we could also we could assign it to someone to review mike's questions and that could be a document that we have at the meeting later and it becomes public that way I mean, I could put it in there. Yeah, I could put it in as a but Word document into the Google Docs, and then we could just either do comments or you can do strikeouts. Let's just decide to Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Decline. <laughs> okay, let's just let's just put into the Google Docs. I also had I, I had another I had another idea along those lines too. But so we'll plan to do the Google Docs, and let's for the record right now. 
remind the public how to find this document? Can the public find our Google Docs? We can put a link on our on the page. Docs Be like here page the docs like next to the minutes and stuff? Yeah. On, on the page for the planning commission, planning commission or for <laughs> the planning office? Either. Planning commission. Should be planning commission. commission. Okay. All right. I will talk in maybe after Thanksgiving. You guys see who's available. I'm only here tomorrow. I'm out here Wednesday, so. So let's. So we can put. I we can, can try react, to get, or we could make changes individually, as long as we're not in communication with anyone else's changes. No, I think we can communicate as long as it's in That's that. What, yeah. We can't like send someone a note or call them. Right. Right. <laughs> a year so, from now, the city of You can do whatever you want with this document because it's going to be like. <laughs> That's what John's saying. Yeah. Yeah. They were just making it all figured out. This dumb idea just takes the whole thing. Yeah. 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 Um, is this a good. So, you designed a nifty website for us that we haven't been using. Is there a way that we can start using that to review these documents or have links through that? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if, if you guys want to, yeah, I mean, certainly I'm we can. To put much more time into something that no one looks at. I know you did a lot of work on that, so it'd be, it'd be nice if we could. It's, do that. it's, it's really great, and we should website. use it that way. And I have another use for it too, and that's to say that let's can we also have a document that we between now and the next meeting uh, where we put down our thoughts on developing out the art and culture chapter. Hmm. And then, and we'll also be using it in the future because there's other, there's the land use chapter and other things that, as a planning commission, we'll be developing ourselves. And so as we go through these practice. chapters, we can figure out what else is missing. There might be other things that pop up in between. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to make a lot of use of it. Um, but so let's let's do that. The the so what I'm asking the group for the art and culture chapter is, Mike's going to ask Montpelier Alive and the Public Art uh, Commission for for feedback about. Uh, Aspirations, goals, and strategies, but um, I mean, let's go ahead and take dump some in there ourselves for us for us to talk about in the future as well, though. So, so if everyone could give some thought to that and put something in that document before the next meeting. I'm sorry to say that I got lost there. I'm sorry. Think think about the aspirations, goals, and strategies for an art and culture chapter. I thought Mike was going to reach out to me. He is, and at the same time, we are going to put our thoughts down in there too, okay. and then. Uh, I don't create a separate those, those, because those are just pieces anyway of the entire chapter. So yeah. I don't think there's a reason for that to hold us back from going, going ahead and start brainstorming it ourselves. So that will be a separate Google document. That will be separate, yeah. And there'll be and there'll be others in the future like we were just talking yeah. about. Yeah, and I can put. I mean, we've got the housing here. I can put the housing in there as well if somebody wants to start picking through that. Oh, that'd be we'll great. kind of run out of time for today, but it's still, you guys have that, and as I get some of these other ones, um, I can link those on as well. Yeah, they have, they have a lot more benchmarks. In there. There's yeah. one in this one. Explore and then they design. Oh, but it's only an explore. There's name one I have a lot of... Of uh, concern about and that's increasing the vacancy rate yeah. to five percent while having while only adding, adding 150, 150 mm -hmm. units, yeah, which would too. mean we would lose a lot of people in Montpelier. So we're just gonna tell those people to move out so we have enough vacancy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get that. Five percent is a healthy vacancy rate. <laughs> Let's remember why we want a vacancy rate. So I oh, need more housing. Yeah, yeah, but it's, yes, it's it's increasing the vacancies by people increasing more housing. Right. But those two numbers don't quite go together. You're right. Yeah. If you do, if you add the number that they added, and we had a five percent vacancy rate, right, we would have to throw a lot of people out of market. Yeah, I think we need. I think uh, I think five percent vacancy in the rental market is about seventy-five housing units, assuming they're used for something else, which becomes our issue. It's short-term rentals. Yeah. So then it becomes a short-term rental. Can you guys help me out here? I don't I know nothing about housing policy. When uh, the benchmark in goal B on the second page is to increase the 
month supply for for sale housing and maintain around a six month supply. What is it? A six month supply of housing. So it's uh, it's kind of a cool thing. So a six month supply of housing is oh, the number of houses that are on the housing market at any point in time should be equivalent to the number of houses that will sell in six month period of time. Okay. So when you have less than six months of housing on the market, what you see is prices go up. So we currently have right now about a, a three month, two to three months supply of housing. Okay. Um, during the housing crash in 2008, 2009, although not here, if you were to look statewide in Vermont, we got up to about uh, 15 months supply of housing. So there are a lot of houses on the market. but. You know, it's going to take 15 months to sell that amount of houses, which is why prices would drop. Based on some assumptions of based on rates yeah, based on this this is a federal housing. housing yeah. You know, this is Realtor Association looks at this, and this is what they're over 100 years of tracking housing. That's what they find is when you that's the metric. So and just you, to confirm, because I'm slow. Six month housing supply in Montpelier. Let's assume. 10 month, ten homes sell it per month, six months supplies, 60 homes on the market. You'd want 60 homes on the market, yeah. Thanks. <clears throat> well, we don't have time to get into the housing plan, so. Can I ask one more question on this? Um, so they run the historical. Yeah. Um, on goal B, Strategy one, establish, this was the like collaborating with other groups. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is worth asking them, you can tell me if not, but I kind of want to move that bit about collaborating with other groups into the goal. Like increase by doing all of this stuff in collaboration. Like it's weird to me that we would only promote the changes to design review and then put up some walking tours in collaboration. Why couldn't we do this everything else in collaboration with other groups. So I, I don't know if they're planning on if they'd rather do those things by themselves or if this was all meant to be in collaboration with partners. But it seems like I sort of read this as like the goals are more aspirational than goals. Well, yeah, but it could be aspirational yeah. to do the work in collaboration with No, what I'm saying is I think that I think you're right. I feel yeah, like okay. the the coordination could be a goal under a larger aspiration of increasing appreciation. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly it can be, I mean, there are ways I could look at, yeah. you know, because not all of them require the coordination. Certainly there could be the goal, increase the community's appreciation for its historic resources. Or maybe it's just yeah, I want to. In, in, yeah, I'm trying to think of in, 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 yeah. I where, like where the appropriate, idea. Where appropriate in, in coordination in with coordination. others, you yeah. know. I just like that idea. I think it's a good one. And a lot of these things could be done in coordination. I guess not the last few, but. Do we have any other things to pass along through Mike? Can you thank them for the work, given that there's a lot of good, I think this is good work and it is, you know, well structured and I feel like our job maybe is to be like critical or try to improve it in this and I don't want the message to be like where we have all, we you know, didn't like this at all. I think there's a lot of good work went into it and it was very thoughtful and just that we'll be giving them feedback not because we didn't think it was good. Thank you for that's the point. No. It's for for historic preservation purposes, yeah, it's very thorough. And because we're kind of coming in not having all of their background, um, in order for us to be able to understand it, those are the kinds of questions that we need to ask. So it's instructive to them mm -hmm. to know that and, and maybe just simplify things. Yeah, yeah we know it's going to be iterative, too. Um, so do we want to keep the way this is structured right now and knowing that in the future we'll probably rearrange our goals and strategies or did you want me to take a shot at having the aspiration the three goals and then all the strategies 
I think it helps to have the strategies under each goal. They are at least directed. for now, and then yeah, we can later, later on re yeah. rearrange them. Yeah. For a prototype, you. If you and if you feel like you have the time, which I'm not going to assume at all, I mean, you could put it together and we can look at them side by side to see what we think is. You, or you sense. can, if you want to, just leave it like this, and, and I can just make it so that you you can have views. You can view it in either way. You can just mm -hmm. toggle it, and then it'll show you it under each goal and then under each strategy. Because it's going to be yeah. linked anyway, right? The strategies will be linked individually to the goals. Right. Yep. It's yeah. a little less overwhelming than having all those strategies listed together, I think. There'll be a paper form of this, though, right? That will not have that ability. Right. You're right. The paper form will not have the ability yeah. to be as right. to be timely. I mean, cool. yeah. You would prefer <laughs> to have two papers paper. paper <laughs> because, like, Regional Planning Commission and others are going to be I don't know, using it as in a paper form. I'm just saying that. I thought I mean, it's cool. I think yeah. there's some yeah. debate. There's some debate as to whether or not you can go all digital. I know John, John, and I would like to go and not worry about having a paper version. But I, my, my sense is we're gonna have to have some single printed copy that would come out and be the paper plan. Although my hope is that it would be accessed and used a lot more just through its web or its digital presence. And if that's the intent, then I think we should design it like that. I think and so, And then too. at the end, we can say, okay, how do we make this in a printed format so the RPC can review it? Yeah, but when we a, develop it, if that's what we want it to be, which is, I, I'm totally on board with, also, we should design it like that. So, yeah, they'll end up being one version. And, and I mean, in, in a lot of ways, this is a very dry format. Um, my hope is that, you know, when we, as we get these more complete, that um, next fall the municipal planning area would be to, to get some, to hire somebody to go and do the the design, you know, really start to lay it out and make it look nice and add the pictures and do all the other pieces that, that we would want to do. I'm just not, I have none of those skills. All right, so uh, on a parting uh, note, uh, for next week, uh, we'll plan to discuss an art culture chapter and look at what we all individually come up with and put on the Google Doc and put on the website, for the, which is publicly accessible. December 9th? Not really next week. Not Two really weeks. Next Two week. weeks. Well, next meeting. Uh, and... Uh, We'll do that as well as plan to dive into the housing chapter and do something similar as we did tonight where we look to for things that we'll want feedback on and, and just kind of do a first step process on that. But Mike's going to put it on now so we could comment on the housing. Yeah. On the dock, and it's, it's right? a much more comp, yes. Yeah. It's a much more we complicated comp because it's got four so. aspirations, not one, so it does get a little bit more, but housing is like, this, so. And it ties into many other areas as well. So, it's the American dream. American dream. Can you send a link to this? Oh, I will. Yeah. I will send a link to to this. Um, as I said, well, most some people won't have an issue with it. It is really big, like sixty megabytes. So, um, I will try to send a link. Um, I know they, so this meeting, I mean, I guess now that we're on, um, so the streetscape meeting that the SE group has been working on, the downtown master plan, there is going to be a public meeting for input. Um, tentatively, it's been scheduled for December 12th. I believe that is a Thursday. It is the day after a council meeting. So um, they're scheduling that. That should be coming out. There are some preliminary sketches and concepts for people to take a look at and start thinking about and it's a really big file and we're trying to getting it trying to get it smaller but I will try to get a link up for that um, I can send the link at least to the commissioners here and as I said don't try to download that on your phone <laughs> might take, that would be a problem. it might cost you some money um, so that's on the 12th. Um, I also wanted to mention to everybody, I, 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 we told them 
either six or six thirty. They haven't finalized okay, it yet. Okay. So. But they did settle on the the date, not the time. Um. It happened once last week. I canceled a meeting, and everyone gets a notice, or some of you get a notice. That was confusing. <laughs> it is confusing. I'm going to be doing that one more time, tonight or tomorrow. Um, what happened was, I, I set up a calendar invite, and I, at years ago, and I said, you know, make it continuous into the future. We're going to meet on the second Tuesday. Just keep it in the future but when I cancel that two and a half years later it sends the email back to everybody who was on that two and a half years ago <laughs> so Kim Cheney was yes. getting after me about why am I still getting these I'm like so I'm just deleting the last one um, so that way they're all eliminated so you're gonna get one I like to so show up to a meeting once because I thought it was canceled. Oh, no. yeah, <laughs> and it's just yeah. weird it's really weird how and, and somehow we got to be originator for that, those organizers yeah, as well. Like, like because Kim said yeah. he was getting emails, notices from Oh, me. from you. Yeah. And it's like, no, Our it's people. not me. So <laughs> I'm, gonna, I, <laughs> I'm just Forget. going to, because what I've been doing is just sending out an invite every meeting yeah. to, to link things to, and I do one meeting at a time, but my calendar has an automatic filling, but I hadn't realized that that auto into the future was actually tied to everybody's email. So I'm going to cancel that last one, but I, I was going to do it this afternoon, and I was like, I better not do it, because if I do it, mm -hmm. nobody's going to show up tonight. Mm -hmm. so, so which one are you canceling? Uh, so I've canceled, because I, I canceled already the, this is the fourth. So I already canceled the second, all the meetings are the second Tuesday of the month. I canceled that one a few weeks ago and messed everybody up. I still have a reoccurring one on the fourth Tuesday of the month. Monday. So now I have to delete this Monday. one. Fourth Monday, yeah. sorry. Fourth Monday of the month. So now I have to delete this one so that way it'll all go away and I'm going to hear from... So ignore all I'm meeting hear cancellations from, from Barb. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ignore the meeting cancellations yes, from Barb. So and the next one is going to be... Is going to happen, but and you're going to get a cancellation notice. Also, the 23rd is also happening. The twenty third's not going to happen, but okay. we but, but we probably we might want to we might want to talk next time about rescheduling it. Okay. All right. No, I was unfortunately can't make next time. Sorry. But I will review and look at things online and add comments. Great. Okay. Great. Yeah, and if and if, if anyone else can't make it next time, let us know. Um, this this tends to be a working meeting though, so you know, quorum's not mandatory, but Obviously, it's better if people can make it. Okay, uh, so we're running over. Uh, John has moved to adjourn. We have a second. Second. Okay. Uh, we're adjourned.